at the Baby Lock Shack I have been asked to show you how to thread the Desire 3. Now the Desire 3 is a five thread combination cover stitch and overlock machine. I'm going to initially thread it up for you as an overlocker and you see here all the looper threads go through tubes so the normal process of eyes and loops and roundy roundy bits that you get in lots of ordinary overlockers this one is just so much easier it's the first of the baby lock range of combination machines so to thread I'm just pulling this is the lower looper I can thread this in any order because this machine has the loopers going through uh, tubes there is no danger of those threads crossing over so I can thread any order I like I'm going to do the lower looper which is the center one of the holes you have upper lower and chain looper so I'm going to thread the lower looper first and to do so I must press this white button here hold it and turn the wheel until the tubes close like so and now I need to put half an inch of thread down that tube, the centre one. Leave a nice long loop that comes to the end of the flap down here. And connect up the bellows to the centre tube. So I've set the lever here to L. This is attached to a set of bellows inside. When I press it, it sends a jet of air down that tube and the thread comes out here like that. And now if I just trim that off to about that level, I don't have to put the threads under the foot, it will sort itself out. Now I take the upper looper thread over the tension mast into the clips and again half an inch down that tube, connect up the bellows, that one's going to come out here like that. And the needles over, clip in and don't forget you must always do this with the foot up. Goes under, over this white piece, into the hook and now I'm going to use the little needle threader so I keep the triangle at the top, put the thread across the prongs and aim it at the eye of the needle and there we are threaded. It has just occurred to me that I'm not wearing my glasses but as you see it's not a major catastrophe because using that needle threader I'm still able to see what I'm doing. So left needle thread goes into the clip, same path as the right needle and once again minus glasses and there we are and just pull those out, trim off the excess on the thread cutter and we're ready to roll. Open the tubes. Now what I have on here, <clears throat> this is my stitch width. As I move this you see the blade moves in and out. The bottom one is my stitch length. Now I just zoom in a little. Around one side it says standard, around the other side it says rolled hem. And what that does, when I turn it round to the rolled hem setting, there is a stitch finger just there. And when I turn it round, you will see that it takes the stitch finger out of work. So for a full thread overlock, I need my stitch length set at standard. This one will lock the blade down if I don't want to cut the fabric. Um, over here I have my stitch selector. 
Now, as you see, it's marked A, B, C and D. A is my wide seam using the left needle. B is a narrow seam using the right needle. C and D are my rolled hems. C is for thick fabrics and D is for fine fabrics. That gives me automatic tension entirely on the overlock side of the machine. So if I now set it to A, with my stitch length at 3, my stitch width at maximum, we're ready to do our first sample. Now the automatic tension has measured the thickness of that fabric, it has adjusted itself, there is a sensor under the presser foot which detects the thickness of the fabric, so it will adjust itself automatically and therefore whatever the fabric you put under, this is a sweat shirting, whatever the fabric you put under there, it will adjust itself automatically. So there you see we have a perfect stitch even with the extra thick fabric. Now the lever over here which I haven't yet mentioned, uh, let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see the one I'm talking about. There, this is it. This is the differential feed. When set at N, that is literally I have two feed dogs on this machine. The back feed dog always goes at the same speed. That differential feed allows me to adjust the speed of the front feed dogs. So if I put the differential feed up to two and the stitch length to four, this is what happens. it gives a really, really efficient gather. So now I'm going to stop the overlocking and set the machine up for a cover stitch. So we'll take out all the threads, like so. You never pull on an overlocker, you never pull the threads backwards. You always pull them from that chain. So all of these come off. And this time I'm going to close the tubes in order to thread my chain looper. So press the button and turn the wheel, like so. Slide the lever across to the chain looper section. And now we'll put the thread through over the tension arm. Now this little arm up here we put the thread from outside to inside, take it to the back and it goes under the arm and over the shoulder like so. The tubes are closed so I'm now going to put half an inch of thread down there and press the lever. Now that thread has come out in the far side there's a little tray and the thread has come out here. 
in order not to have all that length of thread dragging along under the stitching I just trim it off on the thread trimmer and we're ready to go with that one and now we just have to remove the needles So I'm taking out the overlock needles and I'm going to replace them in these front slots. I'll show you a triple cover stitch. So that's one, two, And three needles. So they get over the arm. I have to stand up for this bit. There is a, a loop at the back, and they have to come up and through the loop, down the thread channel. Make sure that the foot is up and then give it a little tug to make sure that the thread is between the tension discs and behind those two arms oh missed Okay, that's interesting. You might wonder why I stopped the video there. It's because I found that my rather ancient needle threader um, <clears throat> has been used for so many years that I have actually bent the little prong that's inside. And I have just discovered that it only works one way up. Now that is something I have never discovered before and hopefully something that I should remember. If it doesn't work one way up, turn it upside down. Story of my life. Again, under the first, over the second of those silver bars there. Through the two, I'm going to have to put the foot down. Um, you will probably notice the cover stitch needles are actually not aligned. The one on the left is lower than the one on the right. This then reduces the impact on the motor. So rather than the motor having to push the needles, three needles, through the thread, it does one at a time. It means that it will cope with thicker fabrics more easily. You will also notice on these machines, on the baby lot machines, that the needles all have a vertical penetration. Again, for that reason, it means that you can use heavier fabrics without any problem. Isn't that amazing? It works one way up and not the other. Okay, there's all my three needles threaded. I prefer, this is just a personal thing, to actually get those threads through the foot. So I just do one turn and pull it out from there. Alternatively, and I do highly recommend this, I will often use the um, cover stitch foot for my cover stitch hems and so on because I find it is much narrower and much easier to cope with difficult or lightweight fabrics. I'm sorry I did that without telling you what I was doing. I've taken off the overlock cover 
and I'm now going to put this one on this is my cover stitch cover I lock down the blade and I lock down that upper looper so you turn that to down you then turn the wheel on the side until the looper shuts down otherwise it would bang on that surface and there's my cover stitch machine so let's do it on calico because you can see the colours then you fold your fabric over you put your hem underneath and your needle positions are marked on here so you line up the left edge of your fabric let me zoom in a little for you that's better so you line up the left edge of your fabric with the leftmost needle I tend to use either triple or wide cover stitch purely because it relies less on you being accurate so the wider the stitch the less accurate you have to be now I'm setting my stitch length to three my differential feed is on N here is my tension for my looper thread so I have set it to that bar that's because I'm using a wide cover stitch and I'm using an ordinary thickness of thread it goes beyond that if you're using a very heavy decorative thread if you're doing a narrow cover stitch you go down to the straight line if you're doing a train stitch you go to the dotty bits it's a technical term you appreciate dotty bits so stitch length on three if you want to come off the edge of your fabric set your stitch length to four and baby lock is the only company where their machines allow you to chain off of the edge of the fabric so there is my chain stitch there is the tail and once again your differential feed will work perfectly well with your cover stitch you can also use that to compensate if you've got very stretchy fabric and you find it's getting squished as it goes through the machine there's your gathered cover stitch